This is my review on these three tripods, which are the Ulanzi MT55 Umbra, the Ulanzi F38, and the older Gikoto 75 inch tripod. Hopefully after this video, you can figure out which one is the right one for you. Hey guys, Dr. Michael Tang, physiotherapist here. And so as the story goes, I was in the market looking for another tripod and I stumbled upon a couple of these Ulanzi tripods. Now I've had a good experience with using some of the Ulanzi camera stands in the past. So I figured, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give their tripods a shot. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, the price of each of these tripods. Now at the time of making this video, the MT55 came in roughly at $70. The F38 came in at roughly $370, and the Gikoto I bought a couple years ago was roughly $100 at the time, but now is currently roughly $150. Now, you're probably thinking what I was thinking, which is hot damn. I know in the camera world, high price tags are really not that surprising, but $370 for the F38 tripod seems just a bit much. So let's dig a little bit deeper to see if the high price tag is justified. Now, all three of these tripods come with carrying cases and some accessories. With the MT55, it comes with a carrying case that is a sack bag that gets the job done, but it's really nothing that special. It also comes with a phone holder. Then with the F38, it comes with a carrying case that was the best quality of the bunch as the material was soft, the size was not too big or too small, just right, and the zipper functions well, at least for now. Also comes with a carrying strap to adjust for the carrying case, how long you want it, and a additional center column that has a one fourth screw. Uh, you can put any camera attachments and it can be used like a tripod or, or anything else that you wanna do. So you wanna bring it up to the side if you wanna vlog, something like that. And then for the carrying case for the Gikoto, I thought it was really poorly designed because the carrying case is barely big enough to fit the tripod in, and I actually broke the zipper while trying to even zip it. When standing up each of these tripods, they all come in at different heights. Now, the minimum height for the MT55 comes in at 21 inches and a maximum height of 62.6 inches. For the F38, the minimum height is 15.9 inches with a maximum height of 61.6 inches. And then finally, with the Gikoto, the minimum height is 19 inches in the folded mode, 24.5 inches in the tripod mode, which is the mode that I have it in now, and a maximum height of 75 inches. Now, for me, I am six foot tall, so the height of these tripods worked out even if I was standing. But then regarding the minimum heights of the tripod, I don't really think it's a big deal just because all the tripods here have a interchangeable center column, which makes it easier for you to get different shots that are lower to the ground. Now, for the actual tripod designs themselves, probably the most obvious thing that you notice is the difference in materials of each of the tripods. In the MT55, the tripod legs are made of aluminum shaped in a hexagonal pattern, which I originally thought was gonna give me a little bit better grip compared to a circular pattern, just because it has grooves. That really wasn't the case, it's about the same. And then with the material being that it's made from aluminum, I thought that I might have ran into an issue of it being a skin magnet, just like how you would see on a phone case. Nope, that is not the case either. I'm happy to say that it's good. So then moving on to the rest of the build, you see here buttons to open adjust just like any other typical tripod. And we move down into the rest of the leg where it shows you the three latch system. Prop it off, open and close, very quick, easy. Something I, I prefer. Now, this particular build, I might be a little bit concerned with it being loose over time because there's nothing to tighten it. For now, it works pretty well. And then at the very bottom of the tripod leg, you have these little rubber caps and I can pull them off, which reveals a spike. Now, the idea of the spike is to give you a little bit more versatility in balancing the tripod when it comes to uneven terrains, just like grass or dirt, because you can just kind of stick it in the ground and it supposedly works better. I'll be honest, when I use it, it really did not work as well as I would have liked. And then with the F38, the tripod legs are made of the fancy carbon fiber, which feels extremely sturdy and well-made, all shaped in a circular pattern. The material itself is very grippy, so I wasn't concerned about it sliding around my hands. Felt very secure. And like the MT55, it has some angled adjusters, like any other tripod, with a latch-based system. There's four latches on this system instead of the three, which 
makes it a little bit more convenient if you want to have specific presets and heights. Uh, very easy transition to whichever one you want. And then at the very bottom, you have the rubber caps just like the MT-55. However, these are not pop-off. You have to screw them off like that and replace it with what they have here in the screws to screw in the spikes. These spikes work better than the MT-55, but that is completely offset in my opinion because it's like then I'd have to carry these around with me and it is not as easy to kind of put on. And then we have the Gikoto tripod where the tripod legs are made of a magnesium aluminum alloy all shaped in a circular pattern just like the F38. Very solid, no complaints there. Uh, like the Ulanzi products, the legs are adjustable with the latches and buttons at the top. But that's really where the similarities end because as you can very clearly see here, we have a twist lock system and set up the latch base system. Open and close, three to be exact. Now, I don't personally prefer a twist lock system because it's a little bit slower than the latch system. And I also found that with a latch system, I can very easily visually see which of the latches were open or closed. So then that way I knew exactly you know, where the problems were. On the twist lock system, I kind of would have to hope that I remembered that I locked every single one. And I'm gonna be honest, over the years, I've forgotten a lot of times. So this thing is just kind of sliding around. Uh, at the very bottom, just like the F38, you have to unlock it there, unscrew it to put on the spikes. I think I lost my spikes, so I didn't really use the function at all, but that's another portion there. Now, another interesting feature is that one of the legs can be removed and be used as a mono stick, as they call it. So remove it here. This can be used as either a walking stick or you can put a spigot into the attachment here. And that way you can put a camera attachment and use it like a tripod. Move it open and close, extend, overhead shots, far, whatever you wanna do. But really, I wanna get into the main reason why I picked up this tripod all those years ago, which is, we look at the center column here. I just turn the knob, open, boom. We have a overhead function here, right? I used to use this particular tripod and for my overhead shots because I did not have a C-stand at the time. And this particular function was a godsend. Fantastic, fantastic thing. Uh, it works very, very well. However, if you do decide that you want to use this particular function, you just got to make sure that you put a counterweight either at the bottom here or on the outside to make sure it doesn't tip over when you have the camera on the side. So with all the different materials, the expectation is that they would all be different weights and have different feels. And you probably can guess the order of which one's the heaviest and which one felt the best. Uh, but let's, let's just kind of start with the MT-55 comes in at 3.4 pounds. The F-38 comes in at 2.4 pounds and the Gikoto comes in at 4.38 pounds. Uh, as expected, the F-38 with its carbon fiber build was the lightest and it felt the most sturdy even though it was lighter than the MT-55 with it being slightly heavier. And also as expected, with the Gikoto being the biggest tripod, it was also the heaviest and probably the most clunky out of the three that I have here. But keep in mind that this is not designed as a travel tripod per se. Which then brings us to the payload weight capacities of each of these tripods. Uh, the capacity for the MT-55 is 17.6 pounds, for the F-38 is 18 pounds, and the Gikoto is 22 pounds. For me, I primarily use a DSLR camera with a couple of camera accessories, so I really didn't have any trouble with the weight capacities, worked exactly what I want to. But if you're still concerned about it not being sturdy enough, on all of these different tripods, on the center columns, they have a hook at the very end, which allows you to hang something off of it to make it more stable. I usually just put a backpack on it and that works just like a charm. Which finally brings us to the mounts of each of these cameras. Starting with the MT-55, the mount has a Arca Swiss release plate with a 1-4 screw for your camera attachments. Which is nice because it's pretty much industry standard at this point, making these plates interchangeable with any mounts that are Arca Swiss compatible. It has a small knob on the side which allows you to turn the ball head for a panning motion and a larger knob to control the ball head, which moves in a 360 degree direction. There's a leveler and a compass on the top, but depending on how you put the camera on, it's probably going to get covered. And then moving on to the F-38, this mount has its own specific mount in the F-38 quick release plate, which is also Arca Swiss compatible. 
the quick release function is as simple as pushing the button on the side, and that is what allows for the plate to slide in and out of the tracks. The screw adapter on the plate has to be tightened with a tool that comes with the F38, but personally, I preferred having a ring mechanism similar to what you would find on most other tripods to give me the option of just twisting the lock instead of absolutely needing to have a separate tool. But fortunately, the F38 also does come with an additional quick plate, which is nice for moving between different setups. And then just like the MT55, there is a knob to allow for a panning motion and a separate latch on the side, which is used to control the 360 degree ball head. The leveler on this mount is set up on the side of the console, which makes it usable unlike some of the other tripods here. And then getting to the Gikoto, the mount on this tripod is just like the MT55 in that there is an Arca Swiss release plate with a one fourth screw for camera attachments. There's a small knob for panning motions, but of the three tripods, the panning motion on this tripod has quite a bit of resistance, which makes it not as comfortable to use. The bigger knob on the side is used to control the 360 degree ball head, which works well, and there's a leveler on the top, but it gets blocked when you put a camera on it. For the MT55 and the F38, they both use a latch system to open and unlock the center column, whereas with the Gikoto, you have to use a rotating ring. Both system works pretty well in terms of opening and closing, adjusting the height, taking out the center column, but I would prefer the latch system just because it's a little bit smoother. Uh, the track is not perfect in terms of how well it glides. The Gikoto kind of wins in that respect, but all the systems here work pretty well. So then with all the information, what is the final verdict? Well, if you're looking for something that has specifically the overhead view possibility, then something like the Gikoto is gonna be your best bet. The very fact that the tripod is a bit taller and heavier, it comes out specifically as a great advantage for the overhead view possibility. And it's really the main reason why I had picked it up as my first tripod all those years ago. On the other hand, if you want to have a tripod that is very solidly built and it won't dent if you're thrown in with the rest of your equipment and it's also very light, then the F38 is going to be a great choice. Uh, the design itself was made for the professional in mind with the functions being very easy to transition in and out of different setups, whether it be the quick release plate or the tripod legs having multiple presets for up and down. Uh, and also, of course, it is the lightest of all the tripods here, which may add up, especially if you have a ton of different accessories that you bring with you. But for me, I think the greatest value buy here is going to come in the shape of the MT55 tripod. Uh, at the time, as I mentioned, I picked up for roughly $70 and it has the best all around functions that, you know, we have in this review for the tripods, but for that matter, any tripod, but both the MT55 and the F38 are designed as travel tripods and that shows in its compact design. But for me, since I don't really travel with my gear that much, the difference in weight, the about a pound difference, didn't make much of a difference for me. I am going to go with the MT55. And that's it for my review on the MT55 Umbra, the Zero F38 carbon fiber design, and the good old reliable Gikoto tripod. Links to all the different tripods are in the description box below. And if you found this video valuable, helpful, whatever it may be, consider hitting a like button for me to know. I would much appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.